Now sometimes, uh, as we mentioned earlier, you can add another component to these virions, right? We talked about helical symmetry and icosahedral symmetry. You can add an envelope on top of that. So you can take the helical genome of the rabies virus, you put an envelope on it, and that's the infectious virus particle. And the envelope is, is derived from the host cell, um, and it has to, the virus has to get it from the host cell because viruses can't make their own lipids. And as I said before, these are acquired by budding. So this is the budding process summarized here. Uh, the viral components are placed, in this case, near the plasma membrane, and then the whole membrane buds out and eventually this bud pinches off to, fo to form a particle. And so the, you can see the membrane in this case is derived from the plasma membrane. So here we have a <coughs> nucleocapsid. So there's RNA and protein right in there. And then that's wrapped up uh, in an envelope. So this is actually a retrovirus, which of course is what HIV is. So the, this little uh, giant microbe HIV is, is shown as an icosahedron. You can see the five-fold axis of symmetry here. So but that's why I said this isn't right, because retroviruses don't have, they have an envelope on the outside. They don't have icosahedral symmetry if you just look at the particles. They would look something like this. So here are some examples of envelopes on virus particles. So on the upper left is a rabies virus. Remember, the, the genome is a nucleocapsid. It's RNA plus protein. So there's a single RNA in there, and it's, and it's interacting with many copies of the nucleoprotein, and it forms this helical structure. Remember the magnetic beads? Those are all wrapped up inside an envelope in a bullet shape. So here's the envelope surrounding the nucleocapsid. Ebola virus on the right here is a similar structure, except it's filamentous. These are so-called filoviruses or phyloviruses. Uh, from the Greek word thread, so because they have this thread-like appearance. They're nothing more than a nucleocapsid, again, RNA and protein. Here's the RNA, and here are the protein subunits coiled up inside of an envelope, which in this case happens to be elongated. So these are two examples of helical nucleocapsids that can be enveloped. You can also have an icosahedral capsid within an envelope. So you could take this kind of structure with RNA in it, and put an envelope around it, and that's what's shown here. Uh, this is a virus related to yellow fever virus. It's got an icosahedral shell, the RNA is inside, but then there's a membrane around it as well. So membranes can go over both kinds of capsids, icosahedral or uh, helical nucleocapsids. Now, whenever a virus has an envelope around it, it also puts proteins of its own in the envelope. And these are called viral envelope glycoproteins. These are typical integral membrane glycoproteins. They, they're shown schematically here on the right. So here's the envelope of the virus particle. It's a typical lipid bilayer. And these are viral glycoproteins. They pass through the envelopes. Uh, typically, they have sequences that are in the interior of the virion. They have external <coughs> sequences as well. And these external sequences are very important. They, they bind receptors, so they can dictate cell specificity. And when you make antibodies against viruses, they are typically directed against these external domains of these glycoproteins. Now, when you look at a virus particle that's enveloped and has these glycoproteins in them, it looks something like this. These are influenza viruses. And you can see in these EMs, it looks like they have spikes on the surface, right? Each of those is an individual viral glycoprotein. So you will sometimes hear these referred to as spikes. And that's why, because of the early uh, electron micrographs. These envelope glycoproteins can be sticking up perpendicular to the membrane. So here on the left is an example of the influenza virus glycoprotein. It's embedded in the viral membrane. This is called the hemagglutinin. And this is an extremely important uh, vir protein for the virus. Without it, it would not be infectious. As you'll see, it, it's what is used to attach to the cell receptor. Other viral glycoproteins can be arrayed parallel to the membrane, like this flavivirus uh, glycoprotein. And they both work to attach to cell receptors. Yes? Are these proteins attached to anything within, uh, below the viral? Yes, yeah, sometimes they are. Sometimes they are attached to other viral components. I think I have a slide of that. And here it is, right here. So the question was, are there 
interactions of these glycoproteins with viral proteins? And the answer is yes, and they can occur in several ways as shown on this slide. So here is a schematic of a viral membrane. So these are each showing cutaways of virus particles. So here and here in yellow are the viral glycoproteins. So you can see they're passing through the membrane. In this case, uh, they're interacting with directly with a capsid. So we've taken a capsid and put an envelope on it. These glycoproteins are interacting with the capsid. Sometimes there is a, um, a protein in between the capsid and the envelope called an M or a matrix protein, and the glycoproteins can interact with that. And sometimes there's a more complex layer on top of the capsid or nucleocapsids in the glycoprotein. So in most cases, there is some kind of interaction which is probably needed for structural integrity of the particles. Now, in, when you do put an envelope uh, on, a, on a virus like this, depending on what's underneath, the, the envelope can actually have structure or not. And so here's an example of a structured, a virus with what we call a structured envelope. This is Synbis virus, a uh, plus strand RNA virus that is typically transmitted by a vector. And the, this virus actually consists of an icosahedral capsid with a envelope on the surface. And uh, in, this, in this cross section, uh, you can see the icosahedral capsid right below here in orange. So here are the glycoproteins in blue. The green is the viral membrane. So the glycoproteins are passing through the viral membrane and they're interacting with the icosahedral shell. The result of this is that if you look at these particles in the EM, it looks like the glycoproteins have icosahedral symmetry. So there's a five and a three and a two-fold axis of symmetry. That's because the glycoproteins are assuming the symmetry of the underlying icosahedral shell. That's because the interactions between uh, the glycoproteins and the shell are so specific. So that's what we call a structured envelope where the glycoproteins look like they have icosahedral symmetry simply because of the underlying capsid. Uh, many virions of this kind are not structured. Influenza virus, rabies virus, uh, retroviruses, the glycoproteins float in the lipid envelope and they don't have any structure whatsoever. If you just look at them, they just look like a sea of spikes. And that is because they're not being aligned by any underlying symmetry. They're simply a, a nucleocapsid 